the question, can I substitute some kind of glue for epoxy? Short answer is, um, no, absolutely not. Nope, nuh-uh. This is not a tutorial, but a documentation of an experiment. So yeah, not sure what to prepare you for? Continue at your own risk. Anyway, here I am preparing vessels for the experiment. The vision is to glue dried pressed flowers into bottle caps and then fill the cap to the brim with various substances I had around the house. We had been snowed in and so there was no way for me to get out and get epoxy for this, which I knew would be like the obvious choice for encasing something in a vessel and have it be clear, beautiful, hard, and waterproof and last for the ages. In an effort to do this, I just decided to grab what I had around the house that seemed like it might dry clear and encase the flowers and preserve them, um, even if it might not be completely waterproof. So I had some Aileen's clear tacky glue. We tried typical school glue or Elmer's glue. I got the off-brand because I'm cheap. And I had clear gloss Mod Podge as well as glue sticks. So keep watching for the results, but otherwise just know I was very hopeful, but it didn't, it didn't go great. So <laughs> one of the things that this initial experiment did clue me into is that I should have waited for the flowers to dry. So that initial glue I put down and then I stuck the flowers into it, I didn't let that dry completely. So then once I poured lots of glue on top of it, then the flowers just floated up to the top. Here you can see me trying to shove them back down inside. Hot glue, meh. Mod Podge never cleared up and the flowers kept floating. Flowers kept floating in the school glue. It also never cleared up and it like evaporated or something. And then this was the Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue and it, it, went away a lot like it's just empty inside there so I don't know it's weird but all of these options are not good options so yeah try something else so when all else fails I'm gonna do the thing that I knew was gonna be the best in the beginning anyways clear cast epoxy I found this up Walmart? Not my nearest Walmart. I had to travel to a bigger Walmart. I'm gonna read the instructions and get started. Three easy steps. Let's see about that. The directions also warn about whatever you're pouring on top of or encasing could be really porous and that whoa this one's a lot more liquidy okay <laughs> and that can also create bubbles the porosity <laughs> it's a good idea to like paint on a little bit on top of your porous objects which I am imagining that my objects are going to be pretty porous because I have a little floral arrangements. I have watercolor paper, which is extremely porous by design. So this could go disastrously wrong. Sadly, the glues did not work. I really wanted to just be able to squeeze glue out of a tube and have the same happy results as resin, but or I guess this is epoxy. Is resin the same thing? I don't know. So oh, make sure you're wearing gloves at all times when handling. Whoops. Mm -hmm. 
These are actually flowers that I pressed myself and dried. The purple are status that I grew in my garden and the white are Queen Anne's lace that I just didn't weed out of my garden. <laughs> Queen Anne's lace is kind of on the invasive side around here, but it does have really pretty flowers, so I usually let a few of them go in my garden every year. pair of beads. I painted this and I'm so happy with how this turned out. Oh, I just, it's filling my cup. Just cuteness of the little garden theme that I had going on here. I'm gonna put together a whole video just about the garden themed bottle cap. The bubbles aren't quite so bad as I thought they'd be, especially on this watercolor paper. You can kind of see a teeny tiny one there and there, but otherwise it looks pretty good. There are more bubbles on the dried flowers. It's not really coming up through the camera. So I did want to mention I kind of ventured out into the whole experiment with the different glues because I didn't want to get another thing. I didn't want to learn a new thing and have to have all of this additional, you know, supplies and resources and have to buy more stuff. I like being comfortable and I like doing what I know and I like using what I have. That's a that's a, the probably biggest thing. And I don't like the idea of possibly buying a new thing, it not working out, and feeling like I wasted time, money, energy trying the thing. So that's been kind of the goal with the experiment. Use what I have. Surely, it's just as easy. It'll have just as good of results. No. Now, is this just as easy as hot glue gun? No. I already had it. You just plug it in, heat it up, squirt it in. But that was not real great results as we saw. But is this as hard as my brain made it out to be? No. Am I gonna have much better results? Yes, already it looks better. Am I really that inconvenienced? The learning so far was reading the instructions. Well, that was difficult, right? <laughs> not. And then, it's fun trying something new, doing something different, learning as I go. Who knows where this new skill will lead? What will I epoxy next? Subscribe to find out. <laughs>
right, let's have some results here. They've turned out really good. The only sad thing about my watercolor art is they've all really washed out. So the color is just very muted. You can barely tell that those are a different color, like the orange and the pink, and the radishes are barely pink. Um, and overall, the white got real muted, muddy looking. It's not bright white anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. They're still real cute. And then the ones that had already been filled in the past and I was trying to reuse and put something on top of it because it already had like the earring thing. Well, it overflowed. Like it spilled through the little hole here, I think, and then spilled down the side and onto the table. So it has this real hard, flat and sharp spot. I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do with that, if anything. If you have any ideas, if I can sand it down or clip it off, I haven't tried anything, but it's just kind of a bummer um, because all of them, all of the earrings ended up like that. And then the two carrots did the same thing. This one to a lesser degree, but still did the same thing. Otherwise, they're real cute. I mean, would you wear carrot earrings? Or beads? <laughs> Otherwise, the ones that were just fresh and hadn't been used before looked great. They turned out great. And here's the ones with the dried flowers. Some of them, I don't know if you can see, you can kind of feel the flower poking through there. I'm not mad about it. It's what it is. There are flowers that are kind of 3D and so I kind of like that. This one you can really feel coming through there. But they turn out pretty. Here's some of the Queen Anne's Lace ones. I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue and some magnets to put on the back of some of these. Just open these magnets and didn't realize they have adhesive foam on the back. Um, it's not super sticky. I mean, it's fairly sticky. I'm not going to trust it though. Not for, for a magnet. I don't know. I'm going to still use the Gorilla Glue. This stuff is very fumey and sticky. <laughs> so, don't really need a lot. Right, I do the sunflower. Whew, yeah, that's smelly glue. Kind of a long process <laughs> between painting, drawing, cutting out the paper, gluing them into the caps, putting the resin on, and now gluing magnets on the back. But here we are. <laughs>